Met bear, bear's the the biggest Madrina shill I've ever met. I mean, we all shill I for something. So, uh, bear, tell us about your sponsor. <laughs> I literally obtained this keyboard by doing exactly what we're doing right now, by <laughs> joking around about corporations like this sponsoring us, and then they hear it, and oh. they're like, hey, you know what? You go Actually, ahead and have this same, keyboard. Same Z's. I got this keyboard. I mean, I, I got with Bear. We got our phones the same way. Also, this <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we want so much shit. We're just like, oh, well, we're just a wash and free products. <laughs> <laughs> oh, to be a YouTuber. Oh. Oh, it's so hard. Nobody loves me. <laughs> filthy, <Aww>. filthy hypocrite. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I can be judge. I can be judgy because nobody has given me anything. That's true. I, I can be judgy. Yeah, that, that, Scott's still at that level not, where like I'm not being judgy, but I, I can be judgy. <laughs> Scott's still at that level where like he gets some free D and D stuff from Pax and he got really excited. So. <laughs> Hello, everybody. D and D stuff. You got like a bag of. We met up with uh, Greg Tito, the guy from Wizards of the Coast. He gave us like. Oh, a couple... that's right. No, he gave you stuff. I just got some of it. That's all. <laughs> Actually, yeah, no. no he right. literally got... gave you stuff. Yeah, no, you're right. Where is it? <laughs> we oh, did not. We did not appreciate it. God. I forgot. Well, you're talking about electronics. I got a a, a notepad for keeping <laughs> secret notes in. Ooh. But hey, listen, the important thing is that it's graphing paper. And right. anybody who's an old school nerd knows the importance of graphing, graphing paper. paper. Why not? Why doesn't, why aren't more notebooks made with graphing paper? Because you can do so much more with them. And even when you're writing, sometimes you want to add like a little picture, a little graph of something, or you want to make. Well, like, it could be because my notebook so. is called Google Docs, but you know. That's true. true. <laughs> That's very true. I do lots of digital work lately. Digital's the way mm. to go. Everybody excited for week 31? I am. I don't know what the fuck to do. <laughs> well, well, you know, Maggie, Literally we're going to. I'm going to. watched you. As, I was a tiny little rat and I just watched you murder. You watched, you watched Thonk do what he always does. Get himself backed into a corner and then <laughs> barely squeak out of it. Yeah, so, but we, there was a peace treaty that just happened and then you just fucking <sighs> It. But were you was the rat there for the peace treaty part or was she yeah. just there here's, for the murder? Here's part? the thing. Oh, wait. You weren't backed into a corner. Thong backed himself into a corner. You weren't. You just decided that this guy wasn't gonna do his thing Thong's way and you killed him. That's not being backed <laughs> into a corner. That's Thong backing himself into, into a corner, corner implies you had no choice. You willingly just executed their leader. Who is of a <laughs> long <laughs> line of like grumpsh royalty. <laughs> We're all level six. Did everybody level up? No, oh, yeah, we, we don't that. level up until oh, after yeah. this encounter. Right? That's yeah, all. that's true. That's true. That. That's true. Just because we weren't sure how exactly it was going sure to play out. If I could right. level up, because he was like not sure. I ha I know what I want. Can we? Can we? Wait, I, does that mean we're gonna level up on stream? Is that no, gonna be like God, the, no. the session today is leveling, leveling up our up. characters? I, I, like, I, we're gonna have ten minutes of RP in the next two hours. It's gonna be us leveling I, the characters. Can I? No. Can I petition to take a uh, chat suggestion and rename my spell Bad Touch? Oh man! Uh, but only touches. only if you say one verse or the hook touch. or the chorus every time you cast it. What do? Is that a song I wasn't aware of? Bad, bad, <laughs> are you kidding me? Bad touch. I'm What's there. this reference? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't, I don't... Google Bloodhound Gang Bad Touch. <laughs> new kids, new, new music. You don't know. <laughs> this is like from like, oh God, when is Blood Bad Touch from? 1987. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, you youngins were born. I was enjoying the good tunes. <laughs> oh 1999. God. It's you from the character. same year as The that's Matrix, boy. or or you know Fair. everything else that <laughs> was, was it great in The before. Matrix? Because that's the only movie I watched all of so, 1999. Is it? What is it? You and me, baby, ain't nothing but mammals. So let's oh, do it like they do that, on the Discovery that, Channel. It's called Get Horny Touch. That's a terrible name for a song. <laughs> it was the 90s. It was 1999. What do you expect? That's you, yeah, the 90s, like, they got all the good names out of the way. They took all, like, the one word names for songs, and then people just had to start repeating at that point, and there was no good names. And we left. transitioned to the early 2000s, it, it, and well, we had it, things like Eiffel 65. Ooh. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> no, that was, that, that was the early 2000s. What is it? I'm blue. Yeah. Yeah, I, had one, yeah, yeah. I had their oh, CD. I had their CD. Everybody I owned Europop, dude. You didn't, like, you couldn't yeah. exist. I don't in, know a single person that didn't know about Scooter. <laughs> <laughs> oh. and that was so bad too my yeah. first cds i think i've talked about this on roundtable i don't know if i've ever talked about it here though my very first two cds plus boombox uh was will smith millennium and <laughs> smash mouth uh astro lounge yeah i mean those aren't bad. terrible 
I mean, there's, I mean, there's worse albums that could have been your first albums. That's true. So that's true. there are worse Can albums. You name three songs on what Astro Lounge. First album that <laughs> all Star, uh, All Star, and All Star. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> Who's it? The remixed one and then the single <laughs> one they put in there. Yeah. yeah. Are you saying that was the first CD that you ever had? Those are the first two CDs I ever had. Ever. Ever. What was your first, Maggie? Well, are, I mean, then I are we talking CDs or cassettes or vinyls? I never owned cassettes, but let's call it CDs. We'll call it are CDs. Are you way younger than me? I feel like I'm. I'm 31. Okay, yeah, you're older than me. Wait, you never owned cassettes? No. You never what? owned cassettes? When I, when I first I, met Nick, one of the most iconic things he always talks about, when I first met Nick, he um, he always makes fun of me because I had uh, the P. Diddy single okay. from the Godzilla uh, soundtrack. And so it was like uh, the cover of Cashmere. And so I was there with my, my caddy hat and my vest because that was like the style and revere at the time. And so I go there and I'm like listening to my Walkman. You don't understand. It's like, like, like if I had yeah. a, if I had a, Dude, if, if my parents, yeah. I never, like, Dude, he's I always, puffed daddy back then. So I puffed daddy except back for then. Except right. like 10. I like, asked for video games. Yeah. That's all I had. I just had video games. That was my, I didn't really care about music until later on. And then when I got into like high school, I started like, I was in like the, the, the Creed and like the Nickelback and like three doors oh, down. No. Oh no. I got into that phase Wait. of my life. No. Oh man. <laughs> like three doors down. We all got sucked into a couple of their songs, but there's yeah. no excuse for Nickelback, man. There's no excuse. <laughs> like you just should go shower and bleach right now, right now. <laughs> <laughs> I've, you know, it happens. Well, put it this way, Tool is my favorite band. So, I, so, so I actually won a contest back in I don't know, ten years ago, whatever it was, with Fall Out Boy, and I had to go hang out with Pete Wentz from Fall Out you Boy, and then to. hang up. Oh God, he's an awful person. Whatever, he's a piece of shit. So, so I had to go hang out with Pete Wentz from Fall Out Boy and members of the other band because I won Southern New England Biggest Loser from being a tool bag, D and D related things. Don't worry about it. So, anyways, um. So uh, while I was on a shopping spree with him, I had him buy me the entire collection of Tool. <laughs> it was so, I was like, yeah, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. He's like, oh, you want some of our albums? I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. I also own all the vinyl CDs for Tool as well. Ooh, I, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, we should probably figure out if Thong's going to die, right? Oh, yeah. Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. I, I think Thonk actually survived. There was it was basically like if Thonk doesn't kill this person, he's going to die. And he fucking murdered him. He one shot at him. And uh -uh. All the other I, I refuse <laughs> to accept this scenario that Mathis is trying to paint. If Thonk had done nothing, nothing happened. He wasn't gonna die. There was a peace tree and he was just standing there and he was good with oh, it. Oh yeah, there's a there's like, a you're right. He nothing, nothing. there's a chance that there could have been Mathis nothing. Is like, if I didn't do this, I was gonna die. No, <laughs> he was fine. He just decided he was gonna kill this guy. But that wasn't. I meant, in... I meant there's a 50 50 chance of if he attacked. Oh, yeah, if he had and failed, it failed yeah, yeah. he could he, die. Yeah, he but you're right. Back. He had three choices the path of death, the path of it could be okay, or I guess he murders other people. Yeah, or kill their leader. <laughs> in a freakish crit roll. I, right I, I agree with you, Sam, that Thonk was backed into zero corners. This is 100% his decision to do this with no force whatsoever, other than, I think my God wanted me to do it. I was so, on a mission so. from Dark Arrow Keep to do this. What are you talking about? It wasn't like a vision from my God. I got told by another one of, of Obald's sons. I got told by another one of Obald's sons to cause shit, and if that means losing his brother, then he was fine with brother. that. I love how worked up he is. Kill my brother. <laughs> yeah, he definitely didn't say kill he my did, brother. He definitely did not go, hey, you know what you should do? Kill my he, brother. No, he, he was. No, okay, I will defend Mathis here. He did specifically say, do what you need to. Yeah. He did specifically say that. He did, without saying those exact words, he did give the green light on death of brother. And, and it was known that the bro that other brother brothers had died, died in and a people were. Oh. So, <laughs> all right. Anyway, all right, let's right. play. So, so Maggie, I was gonna say, do you know what Grauman's gonna do next? Because the cameras start um, opening on you. Like, where? Yeah. Grauman what does the camera open? Watch. So, so it, it is gonna open on on Grauman sitting on the floor in that cave, uh, surrounded by those people. Right before the leader opens the cave door to sh uh, get people out, and he is literally watching the scene. So we're rewinding by like 
I don't know, two minutes in game. And we're focusing on Grauman, Otto somewhere nearby, plucking his guitar, kind of like nervously doing so because he's not sure what's going to happen. He's so, He's got like all these nerves. And the other soldiers kind of like on edge waiting for the command to strike. Everybody's in that like the tension right before the battle. Um, and before the, the cave door opens up and the guy comes walking in and he's like, all right, let's go, let's go. Uh, we're out of here, you know, ride with them. So back two minutes, Grauman's there, camera's centered. We'll say it's looking at the ground, panning up over him sitting Indian style and looking well, at the expression on his face or whatever. So if I can, I would like to stay in my rat Please. form and continue following Thonk. Sure, but what was your reaction when you'd seen the, 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 the thing happening? Um, I guess... I made a squeak. <laughs> like, <laughs> Grauman made a rat squeak? <laughs> squeak. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> squeak. Squeak. <laughs> Otto, you hear Grauman squeak? I squeak as well. <laughs> Grauman, you don't hear that. Solidarity with Grauman. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so Grauman gives out a squeak. Uh, any expression whatsoever? Surprise, pain, anything like that? Or just expressionless? Um, well, I think he's just sitting there and like his eyes are rolled back, so you can't really tell what expression he has. As his little rat form, he's just like and like hiding in the corner and watching uh whatever Thonk's doing. Awesome. All right. <clears throat> Thonk, you just grabbed <laughs> him by his face. Yeah. You have the strength being sucked out of him. You said you're lying. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah. Grab him by his face. Kind of the strength right. is being sucked out, sucked out of him. He falls to his knees. Still strength is being sucked out of him. And then he kind of like, you finish draining him and he just flops to the ground with a sickening thud as his head hits the uh, the stone below. Um, <clears throat> you stand there before all of the other orcs that just watch this happen. Some of them were kind of watching you guys anyways. Well, well, some were intently watching you, some were kind of watching you anyways, because of the, uh, they knew like there was going to be words. These are how things went. They, they could see clearly the intentions that you had and the intentions that he had as outsiders to the situation, knowing full well to bite their tongues because that's just their place and others not paying attention whatsoever. Just kind of like filing their way, curious as to what the hell's going on as the humans are making their way out of the cave. So, um, like, what the, what the, what? Um, so, there, you instantly grab their attention by grabbing the guy's face, and you have it fully, some of them reaching for their weapons, some of them having already drawn their weapons, uh, as he, that sickening thud hits the ground. Uh, you know that you have milliseconds to act before they do. How do you choose to use your action? Milliseconds to act. Oh, great. Uh, to start sh- acting. To press play. Oh, just like like I have an action. You're saying like my character has an action. I mean, yeah, I'm saying do something before they do something before they come to their own conclusions. I will just put my foot on his chest, like like the dead guy's chest, and face them clearly bearing the mark of Grumish on my chest, and pull and have my spear kind of stand beside me, um, and uh, just and and look down to the body and look up to them and just say he has been judged. If that's I only have like a second, then that's all I'm gonna do. We'll see how it goes. Okay. So you he say he judged. Me. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> do me a favor. Um, you're rolling a persuasion check. You're not intimidating them. You're, yeah, you're persuading they them. The shit um, me, of course. I, I I understand exactly. Like, even though your line was simple, I get where you're coming from. You're saying like this is the word of Grom. Yeah, blah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Exactly. I get that. So you can roll for this persuasion check with advantage. Okay. And hopefully you roll two poor numbers. <laughs> I mean, likely. <laughs> Uh, there we go. Cool. Uh, percept, persuasion, 19. Okay. Those are two decently Um, good numbers. You say he has been judged. Those who are reaching for their, uh, weapons, but hadn't quite correct. So those that weren't even reaching for their weapons seem to relax a bit, like, like curious as to what's going to happen next. Those who were reaching for the weapons but hadn't grabbed them yet, most of them kind of lower their hands, but they're still a bit on guard. Those that already grabbed their weapons but didn't necessarily draw them still have their hands on their weapons but still have not drawn them. And those with their weapons already drawn, most of them leave them out. Uh, Some of them are actually going to put them away but keep their hands nearby. But again, there are some, including ones right by you, that have their um, weapons currently out and still in hands, uh, white knuckled or otherwise. Okay. So nobody says anything beyond those actions I just described. Nobody does anything. What does Thonk do next? Uh, is there like, as far as like the orcs are concerned, obviously there was Prince and then informally I was like right below him. 
Was there anybody? Yes, there was one other person I already described him to you. He was kind of like the uh, the master of arms, if you will. He was the the one that was uh, designed to be like the the um, battle leader for um, this like little raiding party. Now he is one that it was more for the aggressive side because that's his need. Like so. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You've you've got. I'm not going to make you roll with, uh, insight check because you've had time to get to know him. Right. He's one that was more for the aggressive side uh, because that's like his place. It's his orcish nature. It's why he was chosen to be here. Blah 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 blah. However, he's also somebody that always took orders and took them well. Okay. So if he wanted to break a guy's nose, but somebody just said no, he wouldn't break the guy's nose because he was told not to. So he was he was put in place because he followed orders well. Okay. Um. He now sees the person that was given the orders killed for following the orders that were given to him and going against yours, you being a person under him. He is one of the ones, the weapons drawn in hand, white knuckled. And you don't know much about this guy, but what you do know is that these orcs are all far better trained than a typical orc. Oh yeah. And you do know that he commands all of them because he could defeat any one of them in single combat, if not more, uh, more than two or three. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So he is a concern and he is not far. Okay. He's actually, so are, are you looking at the map? Uh, I have right the map here? open. Yeah, I have it open. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So drawing over there, he, because of uh, the people that you were up here with, if you remember, um, the leader was in fact here. Uh, you were here. So uh, I don't know if you're displaying the map or not. It doesn't yep, really I matter. Am. I am. You, okay. You guys were like right in this area of the cave. He was the one that was right here on his other side. Okay. However, I'll put a little marker on him for you. However, he was not um, uh, giving any advice because that wasn't his place to give advice. It was his place to take it. Got it. You know. got it, got it, got it. So that's him up there. He's not far. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how I want. I know what I want to say. I just don't know how I want to word it properly. Um, in the way that Thonk would say it, and hopefully in a believe. I don't know necessarily believable way. Um, Are you ready to be judged next? <laughs> yeah. No, I don't want. I'm not about to do that. Risk my life a second time. I've made my point, and if I go down, then I go down. Um. I, I, I'll gesture to the body underneath my foot, and then I'll, I'll take my foot off of it and uh, just point and just kind of gesture to the, all the orcs that stand around. The blood that runs through you is orc, not human. You were sent here for one task, to take what is yours. And in the end, him, and I kind of gesture towards him, uh, the dead body, decided that he would be beneath the humans instead of taking what, uh, taking what is theirs for himself. To bargain with those that were weak and in a corner, afraid of us, as the human clearly said. That is not orcish kind. That is weak. That is a poor leadership. And now we will take what is ours. I just are love you... the fact that you are half orc. Oh yeah, I know. He hates the and fact you that are... he's half orc. <laughs> um, so, so you, uh, are you, um, trying to give the speech from a position of a religious leader as in i am the word of grumsh or are you trying to give the speech as in i am now your leader i am the word that you follow i understand it's a combination Th but which Thunk, one is the approach that you're taking Thunk always takes the religious leader approach like roll me a religion check then sure religion not with uh, advantage religion that's beautiful I don't so see it. Oh, after you say after you say the line that you do, you're going to be able to uh, finish it uh, saying a, a common passage um, that is known uh, of Grumsh. Okay. So there, there there are tomes that hold the the word or whatever of Grumsh. However, this is Grumsh. There's not like a set book and there's a hundred copies right. of it and everybody looks. No, 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 no. Um, there are, are known passages that are passed orally across the, the, the entire Feyru entirety of Faerun. Um, and there are some books here and there, but what they are, how they're interpreted, all that stuff is very, very, very different. So you choose a common phrase, one that you know for a fact that they would know and that you know would serve the purpose for what you're saying. And okay. because you choose this phrase with your high religion check, more or less you are eating yourself and giving yourself advantage on this next uh, persuasion check of what you're doing. Okay. 21. Okay. So um, you are able to uh, quell the concerns of most of the orcs around you. Again, there were 40 orcs around you. You're able to quell the concerns of most of them. Okay. Um, there are some that are still on edge. And while he seems to be a little bit, um, uh, you know, calmed, 
the orc that is uh, uh, standing on the ledge there, whose name is um, uh, Guthtar. Sure. That's it, <laughs> Guthtar. Um, Not so, bad for off the top of your head. <laughs> yeah. So so Guthtar, he's... Uh, um, uh, he does not seem completely satisfied. Okay. He seems like he's trying, he's in his head, he's working the gears. This is a man who's saying that he was sent here uh, by order from Dark Arrow Keep to give these, this command, blah, 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 blah. However, he himself heard the orders that came from uh, King Obold to Prince. So it's kind of like, oh, is this an imposter? Or, ooh, is this like the actual word? And he's kind of like torn between, is this a traitor? A traitor or is this like a... a new commands uh again there are others that are concerned as well sure uh roll me a perception okay all right insight 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 sure insight that's fine too 25 i like how you realized how how good his perception is (laughs) i know (laughs) it's 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 (laughs) wait 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 wait, 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 hold up well the insight's not too bad either with the plus seven i know well it's wisdom it's anything wisdom based is going to be high don't go pee right now Oh you God! Just, like, real poor, at, like other situations, but then, like in the moment when it matters, then he's just like, it. On it. It's like, fuck. So, <laughs> so, you um, with your twenty-five insight, you're able to see that um, beyond this leader, who you just that was, he was the easy one to read. Uh, there are eight others that are clearly uh, not fully like they they were must have been one hundred percent beholden to Prince. Okay. You know what I mean? And so you can clearly pinpoint in the crowd of forty are now around you who exactly they are okay. but also at the same time you can pinpoint in that crowd because you got a 25 you fucking got the epic roll uh you can also pinpoint in the crowd who it is that are now probably as beholden to you as they were to him okay so um and that does include the two who you had that conversation with i figured the they would be easily who, swayed at that point yeah so um but so you the, can the, the crowd master at arms is he just like neutral right now no 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 he is like if we're going uh 3.5 terms you know uh what is it helpful friendly um uh like neutral or whatever unfriendly yeah, yeah. and hostile he's unfriendly you okay. bumped him up to unfriendly that's fine. uh then there are the other eights that are hostile but on the border of you know so it's like do we attack or not you know right 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 gotcha. so if somebody would just pop in and be like fire <laughs> oh, that sounds familiar. That it's happened in the past, Otto. Just shout fire, <clears throat> cause issues. Yeah. You know, it's never fine. happened. Before. Never happened. Never happened. Okay. Uh, so I've got eight hostile, a, a bunch that are not, and then people who are laying anywhere in between, not. Mm-hmm. And okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yep. Uh, and then you want me to talk more? Uh, that's up to you. How do you choose? Like, you, this is your information. How do you choose to handle this? Because there is like a long, awkward silence uh, uh, of this. If you choose not to take an action, others will. Um, but it's up to you if you want to seize I'll the moment just, because you have them stunned. I just, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll kind of gesture, like not gesture, but I'll kind of look them all in the eye or just like, sweep the room uh, slowly and then uh, look down to Prince and again say, but do not worry. He will not have a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A weakling's burial. We return him to his father and to his family and tell him he died in battle. It was Grumish's will that he die, and that is not a lie. Well, rhyming, I hate it, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure it doesn't rhyme in Orcish. I'm yeah, sure like, I'm Ugh. speaking. I'm speaking yeah. in Orcish exactly. Uh, the humans will have their victory for today, perhaps the next week, but with the information we return back to Dark Arrow Keep, it is the orcs who will have their victory for years to come. All right. So, uh, with your saying of that, the um, the the leader guy there, um, mm, Guthtar. Uh, so Guthtar actually um, will raise his weapon in the air, uh, get, getting people's eyes to slowly go towards it. And um, after everybody's eyes go his way, including your own, of course, yeah. after everybody's eyes go his way, um, he will start slowly walking his way down the stairs, and he'll say, "You return, Prince." You return prince to king. I just very uh, quietly nod to him. Then your words were not lies. You do not speak false. You tell truth. And so we follow. Sweet. Um, and uh, with that, you can see... Uh, roll me one more insight check. Sure. 
It's like one, one, one more try to like. <laughs> oh! <laughs> so with that, you you're very keen. You can see that his words were said um, calculated. Um, his words were said in a way that of those eight others that that uh, clearly were like on the edge waiting for that command, they've been pushed back off of the ledge. They are no longer concerned. They're not going to murder you in your sleep or attack you as you walk by or anything like that. Nothing like that's going to happen. You can keenly see that his words were placed to calm them down and if there were any concerns anywhere else to calm those uh, too. However, you can see that he is no less skeptical than he was prior to saying those things, prior to what you said. He just understands that you most likely aren't lying but, you know, he needs to see things through. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. Um, you said he stepped off the ledge and towards me? Oh, yeah, yeah, he said, so, you know, he was up on this thing here. So yeah. he, saw, he said those things as he was, like, you know, uh, making his way down the stairs, uh, working towards you, yeah, walking towards you. I'll actually meet him, out of the I'll, way. I'll meet him halfway, like, to there. And uh, as sure. he's finishing a sentence, I just kind of, like, jam my spear into the ground, and I'll reach out for a handshake like a orcish clasp, whatever you want to call it. But when I'm, I'm going to bless him. When he touches me, I'm going to cast bless on him. He looks down at your hands and uh, takes a few moments to calculate. Once again, with your natural 20 on your insight, that, that 27 total, you can see that there's, there's a, a long calculation that it's not just um, fanfare. It's not just like, like uh, a show. He's genuinely contemplating this. Um, and eventually he does come to the conclusion, I should do this, uh, though a bit begrudgingly, he takes your hands. His reactions are barely on his face. It's actually rather subtle. It's like he might not even be aware that this is happening. You're just kind of like reading off of him so well. So he does eventually grab your hands. You do cast bless on him. He does, because uh, you say whatever words that you do to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And so you do actually gain, uh, he does like feel that like uh, energy or the blessing of Grumsh come over him. And um, he will nod to that. Uh, whether or not you've completely uh, turned his opinion, eh, the, the, that the did point, once again take another baby step towards the, the, that of that for that action. So you know, like the point wasn't to push him further; it was more mm -hmm. like to make him realize that I'm the like I do have divine power, and I'm not, it wasn't just like a arcane magics or whatever. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. It's okay, divine. cool. Okay, so but you know, so my plan after that is to keep them here for the rest of the day and depart at night and uh, head out with them to back to dark arrow keep okay so you give that command be like we're not like more or less we're not going to head out now we'll head at the fall of night we'll give the humans their time to get back to their homes where they feel safe lest they uh feel you know blah 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 yeah. that sort of blah blahs cool you say all your garbage um Grauman, you watched this However, you were simply watching. So now we got to take the camera back over to uh, to Rye. Rye, you walked in to that room with the in auto, of course. You walked into that room with the um uh the leader there. Uh, what was his name? Talek. You walked into oh that was off the top of my head. <laughs> so you walked <laughs> you into the it. room with Talek, and uh, more or less he was like, "All right, let's go. Let's go. No questions. Leave uh, leave your things. Leave the things. Just just come on." Quickly, we must leave here. Uh, we have one today. Let's go. Let's go. And so mm -hmm. everybody quickly grabs their things and goes to leave. Uh, Rai, do you actually enter into that cave because he didn't? Or do you like hang back and wait till everybody else kind of like uh, files their way out into this room, you yourself being right here? So do you wait? Do you actually enter into the cave over here or do you um, wait till everybody just like makes their way out? Um, hang back. Hang back? Okay, cool. Mm. So you see that everybody's making their way out, the soldiers all, some of them carrying some stuff, some of them carrying nothing whatsoever besides like their weapons and shield, right, uh, right. making their way out of the place. Uh, Otto, mm -hmm. Grauman does not get up. Grauman doesn't seem to notice what's going on. Grauman is still in his trance as everybody else is making their way out of there. Mm -hmm. um, you did uh, roll me a percep uh, perception check, please. Okay. You did actually see Rai through the cave as well, over by Talik. So Rai didn't come into the cave with you, but you do see she's over there. You know that she's okay. Grauman's still sitting there, um, not paying attention. What do you do? I'm going to approach Rai. Okay, sure. So you leave Grauman there and just kind of walk out the cave as well and go over to Rai. Go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Rai, see, Rai sees you come in and she, like, does a flamboyant bow. <laughs> You've got to talk to me about what just happened. What, what, what do you mean? How did you get in there? How did, 
you've you've changed the entirety of this narrative my whole story like he seems to be caught in his head about what was supposed to happen while Otto is kind of like at a, a pause all of a sudden like he because he was distracted with what he was thinking about and he was speaking to Rai he didn't notice uh Tala come up from behind him and give us a heavy clasp on his shoulder and it was clearly a friendly one and goes oh Otto I must say it happened brilliantly the plan between you and Thunk it went beautifully they understood that they were there was a disadvantage and we used it to our advantage. And then this this woman here, she appeared as well. You know her. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, the three of you, and I suppose your friend Gromit as well, if he had some part of it, in, in case the four of you, the four of you won this day. We have, we have, we have triumphed. There will be peace. Things will go well. Thank you so much for all that you've done. Uh, Thonk really wanted this peace to happen and he had it. Thank you again. All right, men, let's go. Let's go. I'll speak to you, gentlemen. Uh, I'll speak to you uh, later, lady. And then he turns <laughs> and starts giving commands. See you later, lady. Otto kind of smirks at that. See you later, toots. <laughs> like them horns. Mm. Oh, bad joke. <clears throat> Someone a bit horny. Don't. Don't. <laughs> Stop. Sorry. It was the first time. It was the first time in like, 31 sessions. First time. I like how you announced the bad joke before it comes. <laughs> <Yeah>. like, <laughs> mute, mute, mute. No, okay, go ahead. Preparing us, preparing us for it. Otto's just got his head in his hands, not because of the joke, but because of what's transpired here. <laughs> I, I, he just shakes his head and just starts walking over toward Grumman. Uh, Rai kind of like yells off to Ada. She's like, Ada! Hmm? Turns around. They don't have to know. That's all she says. Mm -hmm. And she lets, she lets you go. I just nod. And I turn around. Go up to approach Grauman. What's Grauman doing? Still uh, sitting there, still entranced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you still got your eyes rolled back in your head? Yeah. He's I'm going to uh, give you a quick tap on the knee. You feel that. You just can't hear or see anything, Maggie. Go ahead. You can speak, okay. too. I can speak, Grommet. too. Okay. Give you another thwack. If Grommet. I speak, am I speaking like a rat? No, 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 no. You, well, I mean, Grommet's kind of dumb, so maybe he is. <laughs> but but you, you do have the capacity to speak normally. Because the cool thing is, like, you could do something like this and look through the eyes of a bird and describe exactly what you see in real time to your friends who are nearby as the bird's far away. You know what I mean? Okay. Oh, Natty um, 20, Maggie. Get those Grumman's out of the way wicked now. Slot. <laughs> wicked uh, slot. Grumman is like, Otto? Yeah. What are you doing? Shh. can't hear you. Grumman can't hear you. Grumman can't hear me. Oh, yeah. No. He can only Otto, feel. Otto would know that, but that doesn't mean he wouldn't necessarily say anything anyways, because, okay. you know, yeah. he's Otto. It's kind of like rhetorical. Yeah. Come on. We're going. You poke him. Are you going to poke him again? Yeah, just whack him again, yeah. Uh, Grom At this point in time, he's still giving the speech. Sorry, Maggie, go ahead. Oh, he's still Oh, he's still giving the speech. Okay. Grumman's like, no, I stay. I need to watch this. You, yeah. <laughs> 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 he's like distracted, so he's like kind of mumbling. Otto's just like, what? <laughs> Then realizing again that Grauman can't hear him. God damn it. And just turns around, <laughs> starts walking back toward the cave. Back over to where Rai is. Bring me back some popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> what's that? Yeah. What's Grauman doing? I don't know. I don't know what any of you are doing anymore. Where's Thonk? I don't know. What? I doubt he'd want to show his face. I go. Uh, I, can I like walk down the uh, cave entrance a little bit? Maybe go sure. Try to see if I can find him. To go find Thonk? Yeah. So I'm gonna head through this way. Uh, let me see where you're gesturing. I didn't notice where you pinged. Can you ping again? Up like. That. Oh, I see. I got you. I see. You. Uh -huh. Okay. So um, I, so you start going that way, and all, almost all the soldiers are done leaving the cave and seeing you uh, heading. So you head there. That's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Thonk is going to be up this way. So he's going to be north some. Do you start heading up that way? Yeah. Rai, you see that. Do you say anything or no? No, I let him go. 
Okay, Talek, however, does see that, and he says, "Hey, Otto, no, no, um, let's not." What? Uh, Otto, let's not make anything any worse if it doesn't have to be. Let's come on. Right, kind of like interjects, and she's like, "I've been in there. There's a lot of orcs." No. Oh. Ah. Ah, he <laughs> kicks his rock and he's just so helpless. Let's, let's trust, let's trust Thonk to finish things up the right way. Let's, yeah, whatever. And he's just walking off and he's going to following along the river down to the south. Okay. And, uh, and so you do exactly that and, mm-hmm. uh, and you start walking out. Um, the soldiers are all out of there. Rai, you see that literally everybody's gone now except for, uh, Grauman, who's still in the other room, and you, who's here. What do you do? Pami wants to um, shapeshift into the prince and go and wreck thunk shit. But, uh, <laughs> but you don't know. You don't know. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, I just but please do it anyways. That's not the prince. I'm the... Oh, shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That'd be so awesome. Cool. Yeah, I just, I just follow Zato out the, down the river. So you start following out as well. Grauman, mm-hmm. uh, almost immediately after Rai walks out, you come to, your sense is back, and you come to, like, with all this information that you just gained, and you're alone in the cave. Oh, I can't continue to follow Thonk. Oh, my apologies. You're more than welcome to continue following Thonk. I just, uh, after everything was done, and, and he gave that command of, all right, we're just going to stay here and and uh, and start preparing, blah, 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 blah. That's... You know. Yeah, all Thonk is doing at this point for the rest of the day is like they're preparing to leave and bring the body back to Dark Arrow Keep. Do you um, intend to grab tons of supplies out of this cave, um, Mathis? I don't know what they need. Just the stuff that they brought. I mean, the trip is... Well, how, well actually, how far is Dark Arrow Keep? A good distance. You guys traveled here by Magical Horsey. And it took well, I'm assuming days, they must so. have enough supplies to head back because they were planning they, on going back. They will forage and grab what they need to along so get, the way. So yeah, get, get what they can to make the trip easier out of the cave and then forge along the way. You know that there is that back room, the hidden room that had tons of supplies inside of it. And you know that the humans left there way too quickly to have uh, taken everything. Is that where the them. skags are though? Or whatever they were uh, No, the skags are actually, I'm gonna pull your eyes over to this. I'm gonna pull Thonk, I should say, over to this area. So you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the area he was talking about the skags being is right here. Okay. Then yeah, um, I'll bring him to the super secret room and just grab all the supplies out of there and just ra- raid it. One of the things that you notice is eventually uh, uh, Thonk is kind of like coming around Maggie and he's like over by the, um, the mouth of the cave where you guys are now. Um, and he's like, yep, uh, this way, it's right inside here. And he's leading them into the mouth of the cave. You are still inside there because you've just been in rat form watching him, like uh, following the rat's brain or whatever, watching him. Uh, so. Okay, uh, so I know he's coming over there. I'm going to, can I come back to you? Uh, yeah. Yep, you most certainly can. Right. And I want to like ninja. Over this are ledge over here. On this other side of me? Uh, no, no, no. There, there, there are minis of orcs, but there aren't orcs there. They're kind of all in a different area going where they're supposed to. So we just kind of grab all of them and. Get rid of them? <laughs> Bye, so, orcs. This is the only group, the group that's with him, right? Uh, the ones that are with Thonk are the only ones that you yeah. see at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess I want to like hide. Sure. Do so I you go up like- here and you start, are, are you trying to make your way out of the cave just as quietly or sneakily as possible or? Uh, yeah, but I still want to watch or like listen. Like basically I'm trying to be a spy. Grommet gotcha. is trying to be a ninja. <laughs> okay, no problem. So, um, uh, you... For you to be able to do that, you're gonna have to, um, like from the rat's eyes, you're gonna have to get into the rat's eyes again. It's another casting. I think you have to wait a long rest before you can do it again because you canceled it to be able to move, right? So yeah, um, so yeah you wanna hide while you're in here against uh, uh, patrols or whoever might happen to come by the area. Could you yeah. roll me a stealth check, please? Oh yeah. I almost said hide check. Like the old, oh, that's a nice roll, Maggie. Almost um, beats my passive. So, so you know, see me. <laughs> hey, sorry, Scott. It's like my one strength. <laughs> um, I am well. He says that's my one strength as he one shots a boss. That was uh, luck. Convinces all of his followers. That was luck. To, yeah, yeah. That was so, luck. um, and, and he reads everybody's souls. So, you, um, Wait, I can read souls. You know what I mean? So, you, um, 
uh, you're hiding against any random passersby that might come. It's one of those like pillar things where like, you know, it, it, it's one of those pillar things where like, you know, they're coming around here, but you're like hiding over here. It's like, do, 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 do. <laughs> and, they, and, and they don't notice you you're too ninja so um but yeah they don't they don't ever catch you at this point make me a perception check okay because there is something that you don't <laughs> oh perception check oh so um you don't notice um until it's kind of like late uh roll me in, uh actually no you have what's your passive perception my passive perception is 12. I'm not a very wise orc. So um, you don't notice until the hairs in the back of your neck are pringling in some otherworldly sense that you have notices things, that there is, in fact, as you're kind of like moving around and hiding and stuff like that, that there is in the water right here by the you ledge. The water. Yeah, it's like by the water's ledge and it's watching you and it's getting ready to pounce and attack at you, that there is um, uh, a skag there. And the reason why you know that there are skags is because you heard the plan earlier. And you've been hovering around this place for so long that eventually one of them is kind of like... I immediately take <sighs> out my fucking axe. Okay. And... Does Grauman know what a skag is? Roll me an intelligence check because you would know some details, but not necessarily a skag. 16, that's not bad. Actually, Grauman it's not bad at all. Okay. So Grauman can correlate what a ska- that a skag is a type of troll, usually like a sea troll or water troll or whatever you want to call it, an aquatic troll. Um, and Grauman knows that trolls are very, very, very scary. And usually if a troll was a problem near his, um, uh, his tribe, that the entire tribe would fight the troll or run because one troll can cause all sorts of havoc and mayhem to, to a tribe of orcs. One troll can do lots of problems. Um, okay, so that's what Gravin knows. You see that because you've been hovering there for so long, you're going to have to roll me initiative really quickly to see how this, uh, see if it moves or you do. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you didn't click the add token. Oh, okay, but it's still a seven. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, man, can I keep the 20? No. <laughs> N- no. No. I'll just go in a second. <laughs> yeah. So sadly, because of the fact that the uh, skag had a higher initiative, it was able to sneak up on you and everything. Um, the skag is going to be able to go first, and it's going to come rushing at Gramen, making a, uh, a quick attack against Gramen. It's like, mm, this is lunch. Um, one second to find the attack thing here. Uh, do, do, do. What should I see again, Maggie? Uh, 18. Okay. So it comes rushing at you, and it's going to attack at you uh, once with its bite and twice uh, twice with its claws. Bam. Um, let me just double check and make sure I did that correctly. I technically did not, but I can add that right there. Cool. So, uh, what's your AC? I'm sorry. 18. Only the first attack hit you, uh, and it was its bite attack. Uh, it hit you. So what happens, it comes lunging at you, and it catches Grauman off. Grauman has um, uh, his uncanny sense. So it's not like he gets caught off guard. You're able to notice it right before it happened anyways. However, uh, as you t- whipped around to try to defend yourself, you actually uh, tripped over a rock that was by your foot and stumbled backwards a bit. And so it was able to overpower you for the moment, sink its teeth into you, dealing to you five points of piercing damage as it bites you. However, Grauman is very quick to regain his footing and was able to like step back and knock away the two claw attacks that it makes immediately afterwards. Um, one of the things that Grauman does know, does remember, of course, is that they said that there is a group of trolls that live here. This is one troll. All right. Um, I'm going to go enraged. Okay. So Grauman rages. And then I'm going to smash her in the face with my axe. Okay. Uh, you know what? I pull out gurgles for this. Sure. The great gurgle. Okay. 20 hit. Uh, a 20 definitely does hit. It's a beautiful attack. 17 damage plus two, I believe, because I'm enraged. So. Uh, check and make sure it didn't go up. I, I believe it's still been two this entire time. Yeah. And okay. then. Uh, so that's 19 damage. X, 11. Uh, 11 is going to miss. Okay. 
Okay, immediately after that, it's going to attack at you again. Um, and I'm going to do it this way, actually, just to make my dice make more sense. So uh, it's only attacking at you three times. I'm just simplifying things for myself. So the macro might say uh, four, but it's just three. Uh, oh. Um, first attack is going to uh, hit you. So it does bite you again for seven points of piercing damage. Uh, divided by two is um, three. And then a critical hits you uh, for, what's that going to be? Uh, 13, 20 points of damage divided by two is 10. And then it hits you again uh, for another uh, 7, 11, um, 15 divided by two is uh, seven points of damage. So it's a 10, 17, and three, 20 points of damage all day with your discount. With my discount. Discount. All right, Grauman just got nommed oh, on. And, and you did how much damage to it on your turn? Uh, 30, no, sorry, you did 20 points of damage to it. Yeah. Uh, that attack where you were, like, uh, bleh, and like stuck into its body, you pulled your axe out and almost immediately afterwards, more than half of that wound healed. It's just like, well, you can see like literally right. the muscles and the sinews uh, of the muscle or whatever, the skin itself grabbing to each other and closing up in front of you. More when than Grumman, half of this thing is healed. As Grumman's getting eaten, uh, he's just like, I come back and I get you. <laughs> uh, and for now, uh, he's going to just fucking book it because I can basically as my, I could double sprint because I am a totem warrior. Yep. So you can okay. disengage and then still make a double move, which is uh, 60. That's okay. I'll take care of it for you. So this got you to 25. Then you're going to hop over the wall. It should take you 10, bring you to 35. You still have 25 feet move, but stop. So you go running. Duh, 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 duh. You pass through the wall and you hop over. Ugh. And you see a whole bunch of orcs looking at you. And you're looking at them. And they're looking at you. And you're looking at them. And they're like, uh. <laughs> and they start like reaching for their weapons as they're like looking at you oh, with yeah, your I weapon out running. Out. Yeah. <laughs> That I'm running. So do me a favor. Hold on a second while I roll their initiative to see how things play out. Um, one second. It's all right. If we have 300 roll... diamond dust anywhere nearby, I can bring you back to life within a minute. Should I roll another initiative? No, no, no. Uh, because you're still moving on your same turn, right? Okay. So they're just rolling their initiative now. Oh, of course, they get the same fucking thing as the, uh, the what you call it. So you still technically have a free action to speak if you want to, and you still technically have a... Um, uh, uh, he's going to come in and... Uh, is the rest scat? of your move. That's what's in there, right? I'm, okay. I'm sorry? Skag, uh, yes. As he's running through, he sees all these other orcs, and he just says, Skag, and I'm going to keep running. So you're going to, like, run past them? Yeah. Okay. Um, I know there's a door here somewhere. Uh, oh, no, that door doesn't exist anymore. Remember, that was from the magical hammer. All right. Or axe, I should say. Unless so you're going to go up that way, yep. Me, so I guess I'll stop. As I'm, Are they going to attack me? Um, so I... as you go running, you run past two of them, and they're just kind of like skag, and they start looking past uh, you to know what's going on. One of them is going to attack you because they're like, ah! And they attack at you anyways okay. because he seems a bit more um, uh, skirmish. So... Uh, the, the first two are not going to attack you. It's going to be this third guy right here that is. So we're going to have that like right here as you're moving out of the square into this one or whatever. He will attack you. But he has disadvantage because of your raging totem ability things that you have. So I'm going to make that attack right now with disadvantage. Um, that's... Uh, I, I miss you horribly with my disadvantage. Um, and so he misses. I assume you just keep moving and make your way out to the best of your ability. Nobody else attacks you. So like I said, you have 25 uh, more feet, I think, so you can actually get as far as here is 25 more feet. Okay. I'll show so, right there. And nobody else seems to be willing to attack you. That one just kind of did, and the others look looking at him, and he's looking at them like, uh. And um, these two turn their attention towards the uh, the skag. Um. Ah, Thonk, you were giving orders out in this area. Rai, you had left. Um, then just really quickly, um, what was your perception? I'm trying to remember. A 22? Mm -hmm. You hear that there's commotion going on inside that room, but you don't know what it is at the moment. Well, there shouldn't be any fucking commotion, so how may I, I'll, just, I'll gesture for the orcs just to head all into that room. Sure. So you gesture for the orcs to start heading in that room. Mm -hmm. um, Maggie? You see a ton of orcs are coming from the other side, like blocking your way in. Orcs that you don't know and they don't know you. And so like, like they Grumman, all- 
grab their weapons and thunk. You see them grabbing their weapons like Grumman's like fuck? kind of um, he's kind of like sprawl out, but he's holding his axe behind him, and he's just like skag, and he yells again, and he's just like, and he then he points his weapon towards where it was. Thunk, you heard uh, a familiar voice. Yeah, I figured. Yell the word skag, um, but first. Mm. Let me take a selfie. <laughs> so the skag is going to come jumping uh, over the wall as well. It wouldn't, it, it didn't, it's not like it moved super quick. It's like it went over, followed Grom and was like, uh, uh, and it comes and hops over the wall and it stands in front of the three orcs that are over there, Maggie. And it's like it, it moved too far to be able to attack, but it's standing there and it's looming. And it's like, uh, get ready to like, it's going to eat. You know what I mean? But it does let out a really loud scream. Like, Aah! which you can imagine is God. See, all right. I tell you, it's Skag. <laughs> um, okay, Thong, roll me initiative really quickly. Yeah. Let me click on my guy. 14. So there okay. You go. So let's throw you in there. You can actually move now. I mean, I'm going to let them file in. Uh, I heard Grommin, so I'll just shout, uh, ignore the half-orc. That's all. Okay. You say ignore the half-orc? Yeah. Grommin's going to come down to you. What do you do? Do you turn and run? Uh, you can see, looking back at the skag that came through the hole, looking at where it is that you hit it, there's no injury anymore. It is perfectly fine. Its skin is like like that of a fresh babe. Hmm. Grommin is still enraged, so... I think if you as, don't attack this round, you lose it. If you do, you yeah, don't lose it. I think when he hears um, Bonk's voice, he's kind of like, oh, hopefully he'll heal me type of thing. Because mm -hmm. um, he always has in the past. Uh, so he's going to go back and... Um, don't guilt me, Maggie. Well, he's going to look... Well, he's first going to look at the other two orcs and he's going to like give them a nod and uh, then run over to where they're at, where it's at. And actually, using his sprint and flying forward and doing his grom and axe thing, we'll see if he actually hits it. All right. Maybe. Hey, that's a beautiful that's hit. hit. Oh, that's another beautiful hit. Nice. It's 13 points of damage. 14, 28 damage. 14, 14 points. Oh, because you get to, oh, shit, I even rolled this. Notice you rolled the second time. Beautiful. So, yep, yeah, uh, 28 damage, like you just said, which is amazing. A beautiful 28 points of damage. And right after uh, your turn is going to be the Skag's turn. So give me two seconds to uh, start moving Skag's. I drink a potion. Do I enact like an attack of opportunity against me? Um, drinking a potion is your action. You cannot do that and attack in the same round. No, but I mean, can someone else get an attack of opportunity on me if I'm drinking a potion? Because in no. some rule sets, okay. Nope, nope, nope. Um, okay, so you see another skag climb over the top over there, but doesn't uh, get far enough to be able to attack anybody. This one that's right here. Uh, so the orcs that are around you are emboldened by the fact that you were there. And so um, they're not running. They're going to stay and fight. The skag is going to fight as well. So give me one second. I'm just going to go against this guy right I'm going to go against you, just but it's going to be against them. They just don't have preset ACs to their characters. Um... <laughs> um. Okay, uh, hit the orc, um, so it's gonna go like this. He reaches down and grabs his orc by the face and then removes the face. All right. And then he reaches over here and he uh, grabs his orc, both of his arms and pulls him forward and uh, bites off the entirety of his throat. And he's sitting there and chewing on the throat while the blood is squirting all over him and enjoying the flavor of the throat, no question. Um, as then he's going to make his other uh, melee attack against you, Grommin, and hits you for uh, seven divided by two, three points of damage. So you take three points. Of so he literally rips this guy's face off, grabs this one, bites out his throat, kind of throws him to the ground, and then slashes and claws at you and does three points of damage to you. You do see that of that 28 points of damage you deal to him, uh, a lot of those two wounds just on the inside just start closing. Once again, the sinew of the muscles grabbing and pulling at each other and closing it together. The, blooding almo the blood almost immediately clotting. The skin itself is starting to fold and roll over itself. Carmen's going to yell, it heals. Um, it is the orc's turns. They just kind of saw what happens. Um, you can see Thunk. Uh, immediately, it's their turn. They're going to act, but I'm going to allow you to say something. They can see that they were like, and getting ready to fight. And then they kind of like stopped and they're like, uh, 
not as many are moving like the ones in back the ones immediately around you are like pushing forward but the ones in the front are like kind of like inching backwards somewhat okay uh these do you guys, say anything the fact that they just got their your faces turn. ripped off you don't see that look where you are oh um, yeah yeah I, mean, I guess i don't say anything Okay, so um, eventually they get kind of like pushed through, emboldened by those behind them, but they move forward very, very tentatively. Uh, oh, that's annoying that you're in the front. So uh, can I push you to back, to back? There we go. Um, same thing with you. Let's make sure you go to back. Uh, they eventually come in and just wrap around Grauman to uh, try to assist with the assault. Uh, coming over, where did he come from? So that's, you can make an attack from here, but nobody else is going to be able to make an attack. They start making their way in. Only two of them are going to be able to make attacks. Now, again, these are better than your typical orcs, so these are going to be very tough guys. Tough guys. Um, making their way. Give me one second. And a bunch more, I'm just going to kind of like drop them, are going to start making their way over to you, uh, Thonk, because yeah. there are a ton of orcs here. Um, all right, so they're going to make their attacks against this creature. Um, and it's going to be... Uh, do, do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they go swinging at the creature. One of them does, in fact, hit the creature for three points of damage. The other one does not at all. So it gets like a solid hit on him, but it's almost immediately like the weapon gets kind of stuck with the skin growing back around the weapon as it hits. Uh, it's now... Um, these guys are trash garbage. Well, I mean, it's these are skags. So it's Thonk's turn. Go ahead. Uh, shit, man. I, but the thing is, I can't t call them to retreat because I don't know what's happening in there. So but you can go look. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna have to do. Uh, fifteen to go here. And then another fifteen in here. Ten. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna. I guess I'll try to get to here to see inside and see what's going on. Okay. You see that there's a skag already over the wall fighting two dead orcs by it, growing bleeding in a few different places, and another one's already climbing over the wall. Um, uh, right behind it. I know there were what, five of them all told, I think? You, you can see one more climbing over the wall behind it. You can see this guy right but here. But we know there are five, right? You know that there are several. All right. Uh, I'm going to have them retreat. I'll just, I'll, I'll shout for them to retreat back to, uh, where, where everybody is, uh, man in arms and all that stuff. Okay. So they shout retreat. Grauman, you hear this. Thonk shouting um, retreat. As they're retreating, Grauman's going to kind of act as a tank because he's he's just seen everyone else just get their asses swamped so he's going to try to help protect them as as they back out okay so what do you do do you like back up and then prepare an action to like protect somebody or because or do you like stand there anyways and take the hits um i guess i want to like ready an action to kind of interfere if i can if an attack comes to somebody else okay Gotcha. And then and then slowly back up and start as everyone else backs up. Okay. Um, all right, thank you. Next is going to be their turns. Um being surrounded by a whole bunch of easy targets. Uh he is going to make his attacks again. Uh again, this isn't actually against you. I'm just clicking something so I have the C to work with. Um God, he's rolling extremely well. Uh this guy that's standing to the side of you. Um, this guy right here. I'm going to describe it in two seconds. Um, so, so can I not project them? Yep, you most certainly you most certainly can. Oh, actually, disadvantage are I'm going to get on one of those. My apologies. Let me get, so one of them gets uh, one of them is going to get disadvantage on the attacks against him. Can you choose your left or your right? Make me choose. Um, let's say Grauman is left-handed. So. Okay, so um, then that would be this guy right here. You actually, because that is going to reduce the attack by a considerable amount. My apologies, Maggie, he is not dead. So this is what happens. The first thing it does is it, uh, once again, it reaches forward and tries to grab at uh, the one guy, but Grauman's axe comes in and cuts off three of its fingers, cleanly off as it's reaching forward at the guy to Grauman's left. Completely saves in the attack, does not go through. It looks at its hand like, ah! for a second as the fingers start flopping around on the ground um, and the little nubs 
start to very slowly, unlike before, very slowly kind of crawl back up towards the, um, you know, the tips again. But the wounds on its body very quickly closing around it, almost completely closed. Um, it turns immediately to your right and literally jumps forward and lunges on the guy. Uh, his hind legs digging into his belly and ripping it open so its intestines are falling out. It grabs its arms and rips them off and just starts drinking the blood from the arm as it as it's uh, as it is uh, kind of squirting at him. He's like, oh, 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 oh. and then reaches forward with the other ha- arm still in his hand. Is like holding the uh, the arm with one of its thumbs it's only got two claws left and it reaches forward trying to grab at the the orc adjacent to him but kind of like fumbles and his fingers slip into soft spots of the guy's side like right in his neck and just kind of starts ripping apart the insides as it grabs him and hooks around the collarbone and so it's kind of like pulling at him fish hooking him and the guy's kind of like trying to pull away but instead like blood squirting out everywhere immediately after that happens this other one right here starts coming forward and uh steps into the room looks around for a second for something to do and starts making his way over uh, to attack. Stands over the fire pit because there is no live fire. It does not know that there's a fire there. Isn't there one right here? You just passed that one? Oh, you're right. There is one there. Thank you, Maggie. So um, he's going to attack that one first. Thank you. Let's have fun fun with that guy first. His first attack is going to hit that guy, and he, so he's going to come in. His first attack is a bite. So he's going to come in. He climbs over the ledge, looks uh, one way, sees Gromman, sees the people around Gromman, then looks back the other way, but it's not just a look. He must have already seen him because as he whips back around, he just lunges forward with his teeth and just takes a huge chunk out of the guy's shoulder, rips it clean, and then completely ignores him as blood starts squirting and he falls to the ground, writhing and screaming. And then... He moves forward and stands over the fire pit that he must not know is a fire pit and makes a claw attack against the guy that's immediately adjacent to Grauman. Um, This claw attack actually misses horribly, uh, in which case it does its other claw attack, which is a very easy hit, and it just grabs through into the guy's stomach, like reaches around his armor into his stomach and just starts pulling out intestines uh, by like chunks full and just starts like chewing on them as he's like pulling them free from the body. It's like... (laughs) um, Like fistfuls of pasta. Um, and this guy to the side of you dies. That's actually all three of his attacks. However, you do see that there is another one and two climbing over the wall immediately afterwards. Fuck this, Grauman says in Orgish. And I want to like fucking grab. I will grab two orcs and we'll just, I'll plummet through here if I can. Mm-hmm. It's my turn. Because I want out of this. Sir, sure. you grab the orcs and you start running. Are you going to uh, disengage to avoid tax opportunity or take the attacks so you can grab the orcs and bring them with you, but they're made with disadvantage because you are can raged? Can I disengage and-, and, like... I mean, sure. I mean, because you're just doing, like, a story thing anyways. It's not like an actual combat action and a real combat. Um, okay. So, yes, but it's just going to be less effective if you disengage versus if you take the attacks. So you're kind of like grabbing people by the shirts as opposed to like hoisting them up in your arms and, and carrying them out. I want to hoist people up in my arms. So you take the attacks of opportunity with disadvantage? <sighs> they are disadvantage, which mathematically is about a minus five. And you have a good AC. It's an 18. Wait, they get attacks of opportunity at me? For yeah, because you're walking away without disengage, yeah. I don't have a way to make them re-roll or anything, right? Uh, no, that is your, more or less they roll twice and, you know, you know how it works. That is your ability. Mm. Okay. I guess. Take the attack? I want to grab people and carry them, like, on my shoulders. Want to be, uh, heroic? Yeah. Thank you. Grauman's heroic. Um, so you go and you grab the guy that you had just saved before him by cutting off the thing's, uh, fingers and you grab the guy and you pull him away right as his arm comes swinging back around with the force of like, like a, a, a Goliath holding a baseball bat, you know, with the force of that, you grab him and pull him out of the way just in time as those three fingers come back around reaching for him and they narrowly miss him, leaving like a little cut on his cheek and you pull him out of the way and you grab another one and you start pushing through the crowd like, fuck this and you start making your way through like pulling your way through and you actually find yourself over in front of thonk over here uh thonk i don't think you've ever seen this before but Gromin has a bit of a a frenzied look in his eye but not the i'm eating things frenzied look the i need to get away from here frenzied look mm-hmm. fear. um fear 
Yeah. Is that the word? Mm. Is that, whatever the case. So um, <laughs> the, the, the other orcs, because that was the only one that was immediately adjacent to a, uh, a troll, uh, you were actually able to pull them away without any attacks of opportunity. You took the attacks, they missed you. And um, all of the orcs were able to uh, back out of the room. And so as they're backing out of the room, um, you do know that they're, both of you guys know that there is that door that can shut over here. Where? The, this, this this hallway has this door that can shut right here. Here? Right here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Grauman's going to close that fucking door. Grauman puts... Remember? Puts down the two orcs that he's carrying, and he's gonna fucking close that door. And I guess fail. No, no, no. Oh, no! You didn't have to make. I wasn't making make oh, a strength okay. check. That's fun. That's funny. It was designed to be easy. You don't have to worry about strength check. That's okay. funny. <laughs> so, so uh, you start uh, rolling the door and uh, and pushing it shut. So, um, you actually are going to be able to do that. I actually just remembered something. I literally just remembered something, and I'm sure chat yelled at me earlier, but I wasn't looking at chat. These are skags. They only heal when underwater, but they have a total amount of damage they took anyways. It wouldn't have been able to kill one of them anyways, but that's okay. It doesn't matter because you did not do enough to kill one. It's just you saw it healing. Either way, it would have torn through you guys just as much and not run away just as uh, as much. Um, so, they have, the health points have to get pretty low for them to turn and run back to the water to heal. Regular trolls heal like that always. Skags heal only underwater. My mistake. Well, if but we that's okay. All the damage that I did to that one guy. Yeah, it was like 50, 28, 50. Not enough for him to even run away. Okay. Especially with the other three coming in behind him and you guys all dying in front of them. Um, all right, so uh, you guys do roll the uh, the door shut uh, to get a little bit of time. However, these orcs are not stupid orcs. They immediately afterwards, as soon as that happens, they start grabbing at the stuff that they had yeah. already been piling out of that room and they're throwing flasks of oil at the ground uh, right by there. They're calling for orcs from deeper in the caves to come out. They're coming out and they're throwing flasks of oil up. Uh, I'm going to move you guys so you can see what I'm referring to. Uh, flasks of oil up along these paths over here. They're throwing oil uh, on top of the water and lighting it all on fire, trying to keep the trolls back as much as possible, giving you guys the ability to retreat out of the caves. Cool. And so you guys are going to be able to fully retreat out of the caves with uh, how many died in total? I think only three or four. one, two, three, four, five, six only died out of the 40. Um, we're going to cut to break here. And when we come back, we're going to go and see Sam and Otto and what they're doing with Talek. Sounds good. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> 